Who is scarier, Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees? Today I will be using eight Quora responses to get people's opinions on who they think is scarier between the two, Myers or Voorhees. Let's get into it. 1. Victor Williams said, To me, Michael is much scarier. For one thing, it's the fact that he stalks and corners his victims. It's also the fact that he is also strong like in Halloween 4, how he strangled a guy until his head popped off, and as others have stated, the mask also lends a chilling factor. Jason, while stronger and undead, does not really give me the chills. Honestly, I would rather encounter Jason than Michael. I am pretty sure that sounds foolish. I actually had a nightmare that I was being chased by Michael from Halloween 6 and it was terrifying. Yeah, Michael in my opinion is more terrifying. 2. Grendel Black said Michael. And oddly, you're hearing that from a guy more familiar with Jason. Let's strip them down for a moment and talk about their essence. No retcons, no absurd stuff, just the basics of the two. Jason is undoubtedly more intimidating, and that is largely because of his imposing figure and absurd strength. However, in terms of writing, Jason is written off as being more sympathetic. You can't help but feel bad for the guy and feel empathy. Jason was born hydrocephalous, and with a lot of mental disorders, his appearance and low IQ made him an easy target for the bullies. Jason was thrown in the lake by the kids, and none of the camp monitors paid attention to the, the kids because they were too busy fucking. No one cared about Jason. No one liked Jason. The only person who ever cared about him was his mom and she was taken away from him. The only person who ever loved him in this cruel, cruel world was taken away from him. Jason is an evil creature. That much is undeniable. However, the audience understands and sympathizes with the character. You just can't help but feel bad for the guy. Call me crazy, but I'd hug Jason if I could. Jason is a creature moved by vengeance. Vengeance against those horny teenagers who remind him of the day he drowned. Vengeance against those who bullied him and his mom. Vengeance against the world that labeled him a monster even before he turned into one. Jason is evil, but less about nature, more about nurture. Michael is the reverse. Michael's essence is that. He has no essence. Michael's essence is a pure, inexplicable evil that no one comprehends. Probably not even Michael himself. No one can explain what drove Michael to kill his elder sister. He just did it and went catatonic. No one can explain why he doesn't speak. He just doesn't, and he feels no need of doing it. No one can explain why Michael kills. He just kills. I've seen questions and answers and articles labeling Michael a sociopath and a psychopath, or a traumatized and sexually repressed man-child. None of those things are what Michael is. I feel like it's wrong to label Michael. Michael is only one thing. Michael, he is what he is. It's why I love Loomis's quote so much. I met him, 15 years ago. I was told there was nothing left. No reason, no conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, of good or evil, right or wrong. I met this six-year-old child, with this blank, pale, emotionless face, and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I spent eight years trying to reach him and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. Loomis is the one who knows Michael the most, and as part of his job, he is responsible for understanding things related to the human psyche and mental illnesses. And yet, despite being a very experienced psychiatrist who has probably seen a lot of stuff, he doesn't try to give Michael any label. To him, Michael is just pure and simple evil. When a psychiatrist, a rational man, uses what is labeled speculation and dumb in order to describe his patient, when a rational man doesn't know how to rationalize what he sees, that's when things start to get scary, because we're dealing with an unknown gray area. What if one day, the intangible darkness decided to become tangible, corporeal? If the darkness decided to one day be corporeal, if evil decided to come to Earth as a human, it would have one very simple name. Michael Myers. I hate talking about people's answers because I feel it's wrong somehow. However, a specific answer to this same question caught my attention. This paragraph specifically. Grendel responds to someone else's answer. Personally, I think Jason is scarier. Michael is scary, no doubt. But with the coveralls and the blank face mask, he still looks human. Jason? 
much more ragged, especially the undead zombie-type Jason, larger weapons, machete over kitchen knife, and the more alien type of mask. It's scarier to see a more inhuman face than a more humanoid one, I think. Of course, being an opinion, it is entirely subjective and he's entitled to his opinion. Still though, I just can't help but love the irony. Okay, but what is the irony? The irony is that Michael looking more human than Jason is precisely what makes him scarier. Liking or not, Jason is an honest murderer. You can see that he came to bust some skulls just by looking at him. He's this hugely strong dude with a machete, weird head and eyes. If it isn't a murderer, it's The Rock after taking a lot of steroids and cocaine. Michael is more human-like, but what makes him scarier is not how impressive he looks, but what his looks makes you feel. It's something more subtle. It's why he's called The Shape in the first place, because he's human in shape only. He looks like a very pale dude from afar, but when you look at that inexpressive mask and that odd stare, you can feel the chills down your spine. It almost feels like one of those creepypasta images or some kind of urban legend. That image is not from a movie, by the way. Just saying in case you live in Rockford. Michael looks human, but his looks are misleading since he doesn't feel human. This makes it feel initial. He that he's not that big of a threat. And then, his human looks start feeling anthropomorphic, even though Michael is a human. He's an anthropomorphic human, so to speak. A human that doesn't quite feel like a human. Jason is scary because you know what he's capable of and understands his motives. Michael is scarier because you don't know what he's capable of and can't understand his motives. Jason feels like a monster from a blockbuster movie, a classic thing like Jaws. The shark's reasons are simple and comprehensible. It's a huge shark and it has to eat. We know sharks. We like sharks and we see them every day on Discovery Channel. Michael Myers feels as unnerving as the alien. It has two arms. It has one head. It has two legs. So it has humanoid features. Still though, it's something more anthropomorphic in nature. It can walk on two legs, but it's the only thing it has in common with a human. Everything else is an unknown gray area. Jason Voorhees feels like a killer closer to Buffalo Bill in terms of writing. Michael is something more comparable to Hannibal Lecter. Not in intelligence, but in vibe. The unnerving vibe that hits you in the right spot. Of course, some might disagree. But to me, Michael feels scarier and much more dangerous. 3. Basil Sunny said, Michael is much scarier. His mask just gives of this weird vibes of a true psycho. Jason, on the other hand, can be seen to be a bit more emotional and giving certain ways by which his victims can escape. In a fight, however, Jason would trash Michael's ass as he is much stronger and ruthless. 4. Dr. Fate said, Who's scarier between Michael and Jason? Well, that depends. Both are as scary as they need to be. Michael Myers. What do you think? When you see a guy in some blue mechanic suit and a meaningless white mask. Mysterious. Not much thought about it really all you see is some guy in a white mask with no face expression at all, just a plain mask who wields a large knife. What's really left for wonders and actually quite frightening about Myers is that he kills just for the fun of it. He has no reason to be so evil or even kill in the first place and is said to be just human. Myers is what you call in true psychopath, the embodiment of evil, who has no regrets for nothing and pretty much does what he wants. On the other hand, when you see somebody like this, what do you think? Some hockey player or something, eh? But you see the large machete, and you'd think otherwise. Jason's large and overpowering size can contribute to him being feared, also all the teared-up clothes and much dangerous bladed weapon, as opposed to Michael's kitchen knife, and also the sound effect that he makes that sure can scare anybody shitless, hearing that sound that he ejects out in some random woods at night. Jason has a reason to kill. Teenagers left him to drown, and then killed his mother. Another thing is Jason more aggressive and brutal approach when he attacks if he's coming after you. He won't stop until that's done so. Michael, on the other hand, rather stalks and uses surprise attacks. You won't really see him coming either. Both have their own way of being feared. You can't really compare the two. But if I had to choose, maybe. Myers. Just because of this, when you look into their backstories, origin, or even their reasoning of killings, and why they became these killers, you would find Michael out to be far more terrifying. 5. The God Butcher said, 
Personally, I find Jason more intimidating than Michael, but Myers is scarier. For the simple fact that he's so mysterious, you don't know exactly what you're dealing with. Jason's paranormal. You know why he's not going down, why he continues to get up. Michael appears to human, but defies our characteristics. The amount of punishment he's taken over the years would make you believe he's some sort of demon, or boogeyman, I should say. The mystery of Michael Myers outweighs the intimidation of Jason. That is, until he shows his face. 6. Yejun Yoon said, Michael Myers, of course. Jason may be a monster that kills without remorse, but Myers takes this to a whole new level. He's a character who transformed ordinary into scary. In his hands, an ordinary kitchen knife turned into the very grasp of death itself. His mask is ordinary white, but now it's a face that strikes fear into the minds of those who have watched the movie. 7. Gene C. Gentry said, For me, it's Michael, hands down. The character is just too creepy with his inability to feel anything. 8. Harvard Falcon said, It's a tough question. It could be one of them. Who's scarier the deformed man chasing you through the forest, or the evil incarnation itself at, your house staring at, your soul ready to take it from this world, to my experience, nothing is more frightening. Than a killer who, we don't understand a boogeyman like Michael, is nothing short of terrifying. You can always imagine it chasing you. Not just at a single location like Jason. It always comes back for survivors, and it won't die. Yes, it isn't as muscular as Jason, and that what makes Michael such a damn good villain. Michael is the shadow you can't hurt it or kill it, will always be there, and you can't reason with it. It just follows you wherever you go, and it can kill you with no emotions.